Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of BLS Ground Crew. This information provided in this podcast is not the opinion of my employer. It is also not medical direction or medical protocol or medical advice. Please don't treat it as such. The information in this podcast should be used for educational purposes only. If you have any questions, please consult your own medical direction and protocols. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of BLS Ground Crew. Today we're going to be talking about anatomy. This episode is titled Head, Shoulders, Knees, and Toes. So right off the bat, it's important to understand that not everybody finds anatomy super fun and physiology as well. But it's important to understand that anatomy and physiology and pathophysiology are the basis for understanding everything in EMS, including treatments and diagnosis. The basis of anatomy starts with the system level. So there's many systems in the human body and these systems make up the human body. The systems included in the human body are the muscular musculoskeletal system, the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system, the blood system, the lymphatic system, the nervous system, the endocrine system, the digestive system, the integumentary system, the renal system, and the male and female reproductive systems. So we're going to start with the skeletal system, the musculoskeletal system. We're going to start with bones to begin with, uh, skeletal structure. And we're going to start at the top. We're going to start at the top of the head. So there's at the very top of the head, there's the frontal bone and the parietal bone. And the frontal bone is in the front and the parietal is in the back. There's the temporal bone, which kind of sits on the side of where your temple is. The occipital bone sits at the bottom under the base of your head, kind of wrapping around the bottom. The zygomatic bone is your cheekbone. The mandible is the lower portion of the jaw that flexes, that moves up and down. The maxilla is the top portion of the jaw where your upper teeth are attached to. The sphenoid bone kind of sits behind the eyes or to the side and behind the eyes. The lacrimal bone sits underneath the eyes and the lacrimal and the nasal make up kind of the orbit of the eye. And then we'll get into the spine. So some, so something to, that you need to understand about the spine is how many fall into each category. So at the top of our spine attached to the base of the skull, there are seven cervical spine. You'll hear C-spine precautions a lot in EMS. This is particularly, particularly referring to the cervical spine, though we do need to consi- take considerations for the entire spine. The C-spine precaution is the cervical collar. The thoracic spine is what's attached to the ribs, and there are 12 of them. Beneath that are the lumbar spine. That's going to be in your abdomen area beneath the rib cage. There are five of those. And then the sacral spine is, is lower than that, and there's five of those. And then the coccyx is your tailbone, and that has four vertebrae in them. So as we just kind of talked about, the neck consists of seven cervical spine. The chest, as far as skeletal goes, the chest consists of the clavicle, which is in the center of your chest. It's a large, largish flat bone to which a lot of ribs attach. And then there's the clavicle, which is your the bone that runs kind of along your shoulder and down. Then there's the scapula, which is where your arm bone connects to the torso. You have ribs underneath, uh, underneath your clavicle that attach to the sternum. 
and the spine behind. Now there, you do have two floating ribs, which don't attach to the clavicle. And then the thoracic vertebrae obviously are attached to the, to the ribs. Those are the, the lumbar. Uh, and then, sorry, there's the thoracic vertebrae that attach to the ribs. And then beneath that is the lumbar vertebrae. And then we'll talk about the bones of the upper extremities, the bones in your arm. So the humerus is the bone that sits underneath your bicep and it's a singular long arm bone. And then on your forearm, you have two bones. One of them is the radius. So where we take our radial pulse is on the outside, the thumb side of your forearm. And then the ulna is the bone that sits on the inside, pinky side of your arm, your forearm. Your hands consist of three types of bones, carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. The phalanges are what make up your fingers. Um, also remember that your toes are also called phalanges. Then we're going to kind of talk about the pelvic area. So the pelvic is made up of the ilium, which is the wide hip bone, the coccyx, which is the tailbone, the sacrum, and the pubis, which is the pubic bone in the front. We'll talk about the bones of the legs. The legs consist of the femur, which is the singular long bone in the superior portion of the leg, superior to your knee, and that attaches to the hip. Then beneath that, we have the tibia and the fibula. The, I always want to say tibia and fibia, but it's not. It's fibula. And then we have the feet. The feet consists of the tarsals, the metatarsals, and the phalanges. So for the muscular system, we don't always talk about the names of the muscles in the, in the body, but we need to know that there are three types of muscles. There are skeletal muscles, which help us move when move our body when we're using them to think. So they move the bones in our body, skeletal muscles. There are cardiac muscles, which are only found in the heart. And the thing that we need to remember about cardiac muscles is, is they have automaticity. This means that they can generate their own electrical currents. Um, not like the skeletal muscles where we need the brain to tell them to do something. And then we have smooth muscles. These muscles are seen in vasculature and they are, they are also seen in um, like digestive muscles and muscles that we don't think about to move. All right, we're going to talk about the respiratory system. So there's two like subcategories for the respiratory system. There's the upper respiratory and the lower respiratory system or airway. The upper airway consists of the nasal cavity or the nasopharynx, the oral cavity, the oropharynx, and the larynx. The lower airway consists of the trachea, the bronchi, the lungs, the alveoli, and the bronchioli. The cardiovascular system, um, I've done a podcast on this system and the flow of blood through the heart. It's called the figure eight of the soul. I recommend that you check that out if you're not quite sure how blood flows through the heart. The heart has four chambers. They are the right atrium, the left atrium, the right ventricle, and the left ventricle. The heart also has semilunar valves and then the tricuspid valves and the mitral valve. The layers of the heart muscle consist of going outward to inward, the pericardium, the, mer the, sorry, the myocardium, and the endocardium. We can also, uh, we also need to understand the vessels that are attached to the heart. There's the ascending and descending aorta, the superior and inferior vena cava, the pulmonary artery, 
and the pulmonary vein. Part of the vasculature of the cardiovascular system are arteries. It's important when thinking about arteries to remember that arteries always take blood away, arteries away, always away from the heart. Whether it's oxygenated or deoxygenated, everything that's in an artery is moving away from the heart until post-capillary. Um, then we have arterioles, which are smaller forms. They're attached to the artery and they're smaller. And then we have capillaries. This is the cellular exchange area with thin membrane so that cells can exchange the gases they, they don't need for the gases they need. And then post-capillary, we have venules, which are small veins. There are also valves on the vein side of the capillary system to prevent um, flush back of the blood. And then there are veins. In the blood, which is considered part of the cardiovascular system, we have plasma, red blood cells, and white blood cells, as well as platelets. Platelets are parts of red blood cells that improve our clotting factors. We'll talk about the digestive system. So we have in the digestive system, the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, which is also called the colon, the liver, the liver produces bile. It's important to remember the word produces in that sense. The liver produces the bile. The gallbladder stores the bile. The spleen um, filters blood and the appendix doesn't really have a use for EMS, but it's important to understand that it can become infected and rupture. The lymphatic system consists of the spleen, the tonsils, the thalamus and lymphatic vessels. So the nervous system, this is a super important one to understand. We have the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord only. The peripheral nervous system consists of all the other nerves. Then there's the autonomic nervous system, which consists of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system can be thought of as fight or flight. And remember, it's part of the autonomic nervous system. And the parasympathetic is thought of as breed and feed. So if you're in a scary situation, you get fight or flight. And then when you're calm, the parasympathetic nervous system provides us with the breed and feed responses. The nervous system consists of the brain, the spinal cord, and nerves. The integumentary system consists of the skin. There's The skin is responsible for temperature regulation, moisture regulation, and other, you know, and, and protection from, from different dangers. And the integumentary system consists of the skin, which has three layers. The outermost layer is the epidermis, the middle layer is the dermis, and then the subcutaneous layer. Now we're gonna talk about the reproductive systems. There's two of these. There's the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system. The male reproductive system consists of the testes, the penis, the vas deferens, the seminal vesicles, the epididymis, the prostate, and the bulbourethral gland. There's the female reproductive system, which consists of the breasts, the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, the vagina, the vulva, and the uterus. Then we have the renal system. The renal system can be the source of diabetic problems, as well as many other problems within the human body. But the renal system consists of the kidneys, the bladder, the ureters, and the urethra. The endocrine system consists of the brain, the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, the thyroid, 
the thalamus, the adrenal gland, ovaries, the pancreas, and testes, depending on whether we have a female reproductive system or a male reproductive system. That concludes this episode. I know we talked about a lot of stuff, but this was just kind of an overview of what is in the human body and what system it belongs to. Thanks for listening. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to another episode of BLS Ground Crew. Please like and subscribe to this podcast and feel free to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify Podcasts as well. We're always looking for more ideas to better improve this podcast and more things to talk about. So please feel free to drop a comment below.